And then Congress was given the authority to, as the Constitution says, to provide for calling forth the militia. Calling them forth from where? Well, from the states where they are. All right? It's interesting they use that word. They don't talk about calling forth the army or calling forth the navy. No, because those are the land and naval forces, as the Constitution says, the land and naval forces of the United States. So they're always subject to control by Congress and by the president at all times for all legitimate purposes. But the militia are not. They're subject to be, being called forth from the states for only three purposes. To execute the laws of the Union, to suppress insurrections, and to repel invasions. You know, that's a pretty good definition of a homeland security structure. Especially if you give sort of broad interpretations to the two of them, suppress insurrections and execute the laws. Right? You have the whole homeland security structure written up right there. Interestingly enough, the militia is, are the only structures that are given explicitly the authority to execute the laws. That power is not given to the Army, certainly not given to the Navy, it's not given to the Department of Homeland Security, it didn't exist. Right? There were no Department of the FBI, none of these things existed. And they're not constitutional entities in any event. The only constitutional entity that's given the direct authority, explicit authority, to execute the laws of the Union is the militia of the several states. Fascinating point. Right? Now, it happens to tie in with the President's duty and authority. Article 2, Section 3, the President shall take care that the laws be faithfully executed. That's supposedly what the executive branch is supposed to do. Execute the laws, not make the laws. That's for Congress. Not interpret and apply the laws, that's for the courts. But execute the laws. Now we had presidents, especially since Roosevelt, who have thought that they are lawmaking figures. But obviously the Constitution doesn't provide for that. But in any event, there is this duty to take care that the laws be faithfully executed. So you can imagine a situation where the president would have to call upon what institutions to help him execute the laws in a serious social breakdown. They would be what? The militia. You go from Article 2 to Article 1. I'm given the duty to execute the laws. Here's the thing that's given the power to execute the laws. I made the commander-in-chief of this set of institutions. When? All the time? No. When called into the actual service of the United States? And when would they be called into the actual service of the United States? Well, when they were performing one of these three functions. This document was not written by Howdy Doody, if you know what I mean. It was written by some pretty clever people. And it all ties together very nicely, which I love to emphasize is the reason that you can't take one part of it and throw it away. It's like the gear train. In an automobile, you pull out one of those gears, or you change the pitch on one of the, on the teeth, or the number of teeth, and the whole thing shakes itself to pieces, because it was originally designed to work in harmony. Same with this document. It was originally designed to work in a harmonious fashion. 